Hi, welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. First, have you downloaded your free copy of our children's illustrated biography of African legends yet? Please do so if you haven't. Don't forget that we owe our children a responsibility to expose them to our history. Also, please help us to continue bringing you videos like this one by supporting us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Please subscribe, share and like our videos. Our legend today is Margaret Epo, teacher, politician, activist. Margaret Epo was born on the 27th of July 1914 in Cricktown, southeastern Nigeria, to the family of Iyang Eyo and Yeme We and Okoroafo Obisa Sulo. Her education was cut short after, her, after the death of her father in 1934. After her father died, her hopes of attending a teacher's training college was uh, truncated and she took up employment as a pupil teacher, working at various elementary schools. In 1938, she married a medical practitioner, Dr. John Udo Epo. She accompanied him to Ireland in 1944, where she took the opportunity to pursue higher education at the Rathmine School of Domestic Economics. Later, the couple returned to Aba in eastern Nigeria, where her husband worked at um, Aba General Hospital while she set up a domestic science training school. By the time they returned to Nigeria in the 1940s, Nigerian women were still not allowed to vote. Even when adult tax uh, payer suffrage was introduced, women were, not, uh, were still excluded. So universal adult suffrage was implemented in Lagos in, in, the, in 1950, but it only rolled out through the rest of the country on a regional basis. So while women in eastern and western uh, regions got the vote in the 1950s, in northern Nigeria, women had to wait until 1979 for the right to vote and stand for election. As with other departments in the colonial service, medical service departments discriminated against Nigerians in terms of promotions, uh, working conditions, and wages. Uh, so, for example, government hospitals were built for the colonial officers and medical services were only accessible by Europeans. In 1945, Mrs. Epo's husband who alongside other uh, medical practitioners suffered under these discriminatory practices of the colonial administrators could not attend meetings organized by Nigerians to protest against these policies because he was a civil service. But Margaret Epo was able to attend. This was only the beginning of her life as an activist and advocate for political and human rights. And she had some really major victories. For example, in 1949, when coal miners in Enugu requested a wage increase, their leaders were shot by colonial administrators for daring to ask for what was their right. Margaret Epo rallied women's groups around the country and they declared a day of national mourning for the shooting victims. This helped draw attention to the incident, not only in Nigeria, but across the world. During the demonstrations, Margaret Ekpo was very vocal in condemning the colonial authorities. She even went so far as to declare that if a woman had been among those killed, the British women in Aba would have all been killed. Now, this statement led to her arrest 
and she and others who dared to confront the British were harassed and threatened with deportation from their own country, the country of their birth. I mean, there was nothing these colonizers did not, uh, did not do to us. Anyway, in retaliation, the famous Abba women threatened to set the town ablaze and this forced the colonial administrators to set Mrs. Epo and others free. The protests and Mrs. Epo's position were part of growing nationalist movements, the creation of new political parties and increasing animosity towards the British colonial government. So during her career, Epo joined ranks with the prominent uh, Fumilayo Ransom Kuti under the umbrella of the Nigerian Women's Union, NWU. Together, they traveled to different provinces to mobilize women to join the NWU and be a part of Nigeria's decolonization journey. Mrs. Ransom Kuti traveled with Mrs. Epo to the Enugu Colliery during the cri uh, crisis at the local uh, at the at the coal mine in 1949, and she also they also visited widows of the deceased together. Both women also raised awareness about universal adult suffrage, uh, women's education, and independence from oppressive colonial rule. In 1954. Mrs. Epo formed the Abba Township Women's Association, ATWA. Other associations similar to the ATWA also sprang up all over the eastern region as women mobilized to protest their economic and political interests. To encourage women to join ATWA, Mrs. Epo devised a particularly clever plan at the time, the world was just emerging from the end of the Second World War, and there were still shortages of essential commodities, especially salt. Now, Mrs. Echo purchased all the bags of salt in Abba Market, and therefore controlled its sale to members of ATWA. Any woman who wanted to purchase salt had to first register with the association. This allowed her to mobilize women under one major social political body. It marked Epo out as an astute political player. So other associations such as uh, the Abba Community League and the Abba Market Women's Association joined forces with ATWA to share anti-colonial messages and to mobilize their cohorts towards electro uh, electoral politics. These mobilization strategies transformed into a formidable women's socio-political movement. Women were able to secure seats at the Abba Urban District Council, breaking the male political monopoly of the local council and securing a voice in local politics. In 1957, Mrs. Epo was appointed to the Abba Urban District Council, AUDC Caretaker Committee. The NCNC party's leadership quickly then recognized Epo's socio-political negotiation skills and her name featured regularly on lists of advisors included in delegations representing the eastern region of Nigeria at constitutional conferences um, held in London and, uh, and Lagos. It was only the eastern and western region premiers who actually invited a few women to be a part of their delegations. No woman was included in the northern delegations to the constitutional talks throughout the period leading up to Nigeria's independence in 1960. So, Ekpo was one of a few well-known uh, female Nigerian politicians representing women's interests in conferences that shaped the country's constitutional future. 
In January 1959, Mrs. Ekpo was appointed to serve as a special member to the Eastern House of Chiefs, which was a particularly conservative male-dominated institution. Alongside her was Janet Mokelu. She was one of the only two female members. These were the only two female members, Janet Mokelu and Margaret Ekpo. Her chance to stand for election finally came in 1961 and she won a seat in the regional elections for Aba Union North constituency in the Eastern House of Assembly regional elections. Her mass mobilization of women over the years paid off as women came out to vote for her and Janet Mokelu. Uh, she won again in 1963, in the 1963 regional elections. Her second victory inspired other women in the region to participate in electoral politics. Margaret Epo remained in the regional assembly until January 15, 1966, when Nigeria's government was overthrown in a military coup. She was bestowed with several national and international awards, including the Order of the Niger, O-O-N, and Commander of the uh, Order of the Federal Republic, C-F-R. She died at the age of 92 on September 22nd, 2006, and was buried in a special mausoleum built by the state government at the Hawkins Cemetery in Calabar. Cross River State on December 9th, 2006. As part of uh, the memorialization of her name, the state government renamed Calabar Airport the Margaret Epo International Airport. Thanks for watching. Please download your free copy of our children's books and support us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Also, Tell your friends about this channel. Thank you.